Sunrise is one of the oldest anime studios with a majority of their works being mecha and science fiction. I won't say anything about their shows during the 70s, since anime were aimed at children back then and there was no need for plot or critical thinking. The title which changed that mentality was the original Gundam in 1979 and the successive Universal Century timeline, which began an era where animated series with giant robots could be more than episodic silliness for kids. The man behind Gundam and many other Sunrise mecha is Yoshiyuki Tomino. The trademarks of his shows are the over-dramatization of war and the deaths of most characters. By today's standards, it feels like everyone is acting over the top, but during the 80s, people with post-traumatic stress disorder or mental conditions in general was a fairly new concept. As cringy as it feels today, it was a breath of fresh air for the genre. As a polar opposite, we have another director, Ryosuke Takahashi. His trademarks are very somber, slow and depressing mecha series. Unlike the hyperactive, paranoid characters of Tomino, his heroes are far more cynical and down-to-earth. Although that makes them far more serious and seemingly mature, it also makes his anime very dull and boring in the eyes of the average anime fan. You don't enjoy them, you more like tolerate them as you try to stay immersed in the atmosphere. This doesn't make them inherently bad, they just don't give you much motivation to keep watching. As for anything else regarding Sunrise, there isn't much to say. They can be held responsible for the oversaturation of the mecha genre, as they kept pumping out mecha one after another and almost every one of them is mediocre and forgettable. Some were great when they came out, but they didn't age well and it's very hard to recommend them today. Very slow pacing, not much content to keep you going. Exceptions include the vision of Escaflone, a great example of how you can mix a dozen different genres and still have a great action-adventure at the end. The shoujo elements were silly and the ending is kinda bullshit, but it still remains one of the most captivating mecha titles of all times. Another goodie is Cowboy Bebop. It's nothing much in terms of plot, but as far as production values and western-oriented rule of cool goes, it's the best space western of all times. There is also Planetes, which is one of the most enjoyable anime I have ever seen, despite a light plot revolving around out garbage disposal men. Space makes everything better. But all things need to come to an end when it comes to modern anime, because in 2006 Sunrise lost its dignity and became the shameless horror we came to know so well. Their swan song was Zegapain, a thought-provoking mecha that is essentially the Matrix with giant robots. Wonderful ideas mean nothing before fancy visuals, and after the smash hit that was Code Geass, the guys in Sunrise realized what anime fans would pay big bucks for. Random bullshit full of fan service and completely chaotic plots that are labeled unpredictable. You know, Valrave, Crossunger, blah. Gintama became the best anime of all times, according to Shonen Tards, when it's mostly plotless referential humor and a very loose plot that was stolen from Rurunin Kenshin. Super Saiyan Bankai Sharingan Straw Hut Plus Ultra. Ha ha ha! Such a funny story! Sunrise as a whole is a mainstream magnet. Some of its titles are amazing pieces of war, drama and science fiction, but compared to the bulk of the badly written mediocrities they have produced over the decades, the ratio of good to bad is very low. Most of their best titles are part of the universal century of the Gundam franchise, with almost everything else being skippable and the reason they fail the Sturgeon test. Production IG exists since the late 80s, but it didn't do anything major up until 1995 with Ghost in the Shell, a movie that still looks amazing today and it's one of the most mature and iconic films anime fans can proudly recommend to others before they shit on the live-action adaptation. This film is a historical landmark of animation and also signifies what the studio is all about. Great directing, splendid production values, and completely dry characters. It worked for the time it was made, because it was about the cyborgs, came out at a time when Japan was still recovering from the economic crisis and its people were depressed. When IG made their second movie five years later, the results weren't as good, partly because the characters weren't a cyborgs. Jin Ro feels more dry than inspirational. The themes are still mature and the presentation is superb, but it's just not fun. Not bad, just too boring to keep you watching because the people in it are distant and emotionless. This is, in a nutshell, the problem with the studio. Very good ideas and production values, but also very dry characters and slow pacing. Despite most of their titles being praised for the food for thought, they provide. Almost everything they make gets forgotten fast because there is nothing to identify with. And even that respect was lost after 2011, when the studio sold it out to the tasteless masses and began making crowd-pleasing mediocrities and cringe otaku pandering. The quality of writing dropped almost vertically, despite more people watching their crap nowadays, for being easily digestible nonsense. The only two shows I like from them, other than the serious version of Ghost in a Shell, are both satires of stereotypes and have very little content besides the comedy, meaning they are the exact opposite of what they are known for. I would gladly pick a simple comedy over a complicating snore fest. 
as a whole IG is a mostly miss studio because they either make something elaborate but boring or they make it fun and brainless.